after you have initial access to an Active Directory environment, you need to get a lay of the land. You need to figure out what is going on. What user have I compromised? What permissions do they have? What computers are here? What different groups are here? And how can I exploit them? Now, there's an incredible tool that allows you to do that called Bloodhound. And in this video, I'm going to guide you through the full setup of Bloodhound, how to get all of the loot from the target Active Directory environment with your Linux Kali machine, and then how to put that into Bloodhound and begin enumerating the Active Directory environment. So without any further ado, let me go ahead and share my screen. Here we are on my Kali Linux terminal. And our first thing we need to do is install Docker. Now this is not installed by default in Kali Linux. So if it's not installed for you, it's super easy. You can do sudo Oh, if I would type in the right screen, sudo app install docker.io, you can see the command right there. So you type that into Kali and hit enter on your keyboard. You can see mine's already installed, so it's not going to do anything. But that is step number one, get Docker installed on your computer. Step number two is we need to go get the docs for uh, Bloodhound Community Edition. So we can just type Bloodhound Community Edition, like so. And we can close getting started with Bloodhound Community Edition. They have a lot of good documentation right here walking through the process, but we want to know, of course, how to install it. So follow this article, install Bloodhound Community Edition with Docker Compose. And here's the beautiful thing. It's literally a one liner command that we can spin up. So I'm going to copy this command right here. We're going to go back over to our terminal and there's just a few minor adjustments we need to make. First, we need to do Docker Compose like that at least in our Kali Linux instance. And unless you've added your user to the Docker group, we need to run this with sudo permission. So we'll type sudo right there, but that is the command that we need. So let's hit enter on our keyboard, cross our fingers and hope that this works. And what it's doing right now, if you're new to Docker, Docker are different containers or instances, almost like VMs that you can run inside of your VM. That's my like very high level explanation of what Docker is, but it allows it to have all the processes needed for that program to run right inside of that Docker container. So what this just did is it pulled down the latest image for Bloodhound using Docker, and now it's spinning everything up, including starting the Neo4j database. Now in the past, before they did all of this via Docker, it was a little more confusing. You had to set up the Neo4j database, you then had to run Bloodhound, you had to try to get everything connected, but this way, all of it is done for you auto-magically, if I'm saying that right. Now, right away, Way, as we do this, you're going to see we have an initial password set to this. We're going to scroll up, make sure we get that initial password. That initial password is important. Now, if we go back over to their installation docs, they explain exactly what we need to do, right? Locate the randomly generated password in a browser, navigate to that and log in, log in with the username admin and the randomly generated password from the logs. Okay, cool. Well, that's not working. <laughs> Let's see why that might not be working. We're going to see localhost 8080 like so. There we go. So there we are. We're at Bloodhound localhost 8080 UI login. If we jump up back over to the docs, it says we need to use a username admin and our randomly generated password from the log. So we'll use our username admin, grab our randomly generated password from the logs right there, go back over to Bloodhound and paste in our password. Login failed. I wonder if this is because... I made this previously. What? What? What is going on? Guys, Bloodhound, I'm trying to make a YouTube video about you and your instructions aren't working <laughs> in a browser. Navigate to that. Did I copy like the, oh, I have an extra space at the end. Did you see that? At the end of my G, I had an extra space. Let's go back to this. Let's try that again. Hit log in. There we go. And it says your account has expired. So we need to set a new password and we'll go ahead and use this securely generated password that works for me. And we will click reset password. Expired password invalid. Okay, sweet. Reset password. 
and we are in. We are now in Bloodhound, but it says, hey, no data available. It appears that no data has been uploaded yet. See our data collection, et cetera, et cetera. Now, there's multiple ways you can collect data. If you have a shell on the computer or remote access to a Windows computer in the Active Directory environment, you can use sharphound.exe to collect the data. But what's most likely to happen is maybe you have some low-level AD credentials, which we have in this lab environment, but we don't have remote access to a Windows computer, so we have to collect the data from our Kali Linux machine, which introduces a little tool called Bloodhound Python. A Python base ingester for Bloodhound. Now, this is one of those things where I always forget the flags for this. So I made a script that auto magically does this for you. So if you go over to my GitHub, and I'll drop a link to this in the description of this video. But to be honest, not Tyler Ramsey, to be honest, I'll probably forget. So let me know in the comments if I forget to share this. Otherwise, just go to github.com forward slash tenebrate 93. And you go to my offensive security repo right here and go over to the Active Directory file. And in the Active Directory one, I have a bunch of scripts for random Active Directory enumeration, including this ad bloodhound.sh script. Now, this isn't even that cool. It just fills in all the flags for you so you don't struggle with the syntax like I always do. So we're gonna go to here, copy the full script, go over to our terminal, we'll open up a new one. We'll call this terminal and we'll do nano ad bloodhound.sh, paste in the script, save it and make it executable. All right, and if we do this, did I add a help file? I did not. So you just have to follow what it does. Do I have a help file? No. All right, it says the domain first. So let's go ahead and give it our domain. In this instance, it's k2.thm. So shout out to the k2 uh, room on Try Hack Me. That's what this video is based off of, a small portion of that lab. But there is our domain. And our user that we compromised that I showcased in the last video on brute forcing or password spraying rather users in Active Directory. Remember we compromised our bud at k2.thm. I think I have that correct. And we have our password. I'm gonna copy that from over here. We'll drop in the password of our user like so. We need the IP of our domain, which if we ping k2.thm, that is our IP right there. So we'll grab the IP, drop our IP in there. And now it's gonna go get all the loot that we need. So you can see it found the Active Directory domain of k2.thm, it's getting the ticket granting ticket for our user, so it's authenticating to the Active Directory environment, and now it's enumerating all of the information. Now this is a tool I use when I do real Active Directory pen tests. This tool actually helped me get domain admin in one day in a real customer's environment doing AD pen testing. So in a real environment, this is gonna take much longer because there's usually way more than seven users and 54 groups and two GPOs and 19 containers, but here we are. We're grabbing all of what is called the loot from the Active Directory environment, and then we're able to load that into Bloodhound. You can see our query is done. If we do ls, you can see all these .json files. Now let's go back over to our Bloodhound instance right here, and we'll go here. I believe it's administration and upload files. We'll click here to drag and upload the files. We'll jump back over to my YouTube thing right here, and you can see all of our containers here. I'm gonna highlight all of them and click open, and we will click upload and upload to continue. Apparently, you can see all of them have been uploaded. Now it's gonna take just about a minute for everything to ingest. You can see we have our spam at example.com that's just showing that as our default thing. And you can see it's already complete. So now we can figure out, let's enumerate some of the permissions that we have. So if we go over to explore, I mean, there's a bunch of cool, um, ciphers and pathfinding things that we can do. But in this instance, I just wanna show you some basic enumeration. So remember we compromised, was it the R, R bud user? There we go. So we can click the R bud user right here. And here's our user. We can go ahead and mark him as own, saying that we have pwned him. And very quickly, we can see some information about our user. So we can see whether or not they're an admin, whether or not they allow unconstrained delegation, which I might make a video showing how to exploit that and explaining what that is. We can see their distinguished name, their SID, the domain stuff, when their password last was set, when their password, whether or not it expires here, it never expires. So if we were doing a pen test, even if we didn't compromise the AD environment, this would be something we would want to report to the client is like bad password practices, password not required false. We can see, hey, what is our user a member of? And in this instance, 
they are a member of users, remote management, domain users, and IT staff too. So we have these different groups. And let's say all of these seem pretty normal, but we have remote management. So that tells us we might be able to get remote access to the machine. But we're also an IT staff too. So if we click IT staff too, does this group have any special powers? We can see it's a member of, that's just us. We're the only people in that member and inbound object control that's not really going to do much for us it's just showing what other people can do to us but we can't do anything for them but if we had some different permissions we might be able to pwn them and it would be interesting but one thing this does show us since we have remote membership access we can get a shell on this target machine with something called evil winrm and i'll show you exactly how we can do that so we use bloodhound we put the loot in there and now we can get initial access to our target machine We'll go back over to our terminal here and we'll do evil winrm slash u, not j smith this time, but r bud. You can actually see from when I was doing this before. Whoops, just like that. So you can see we pass it the password and then we're going to pass it our target computer, which is k2.thm. And I will click enter on my keyboard. And we cross our fingers and we hope that it works. And it does. And we now have access to the remote computer as the RBUD user because we were able to use Bloodhound, enumerate our user. We saw that they were in that remote management users uh, group, which allows us to have remote management to the computer. So hey, hope you found this helpful. If you wanna see the full walkthrough where I go into this a lot deeper, you can watch my K2 walkthroughs on my YouTube channel. Otherwise, hope you found this helpful. And I say this all the time, but I mean it guys, I do my best to read all of the comments on my YouTube channel. So if there's something I said that was unclear, or if I forgot to leave a link in the description. Let me know in the comment and I will read that comment. I'll do my best to respond to you and do what I can to help you out. So seriously, thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I will see you in the next one.